Hi, in this set of tutorials we're going to learn how to create vector graphics. And the way we're going to do that is the way a lot of us start learning how to draw, and that is by tracing. So we're going to take this auto here, this car, this Maserati, and we're going to trace it. And by doing that, we're going to learn how to use the pen tool in Photoshop. Now this tool is not as sophisticated as it is in Illustrator, and some people hate it in Photoshop. But I think it's really to your advantage to learn how to use it in Photoshop because you can use it in combination with raster-based images. And the difference is raster-based images are pixel-based. So that's what photographs are. This is a raster-based image. It's made up of pixels. Vector images, on the other hand, and here's a vector copy of the same image that I created. Vector, cop vector images are made with fill layers and using paths which follow a graph that is built into Photoshop and also uses Bezier curves to create the curves. So you're great, basically graphing points and then those points are being filled with pixels. The advantage is that they're not resolution dependent so we can take smaller stuff and make it bigger and it's really easy to change colors and stuff like that. The problem is, is it doesn't look exactly like a photograph, but as you can see here, you can get it looking pretty close. And using a combination of Photoshop Draw tools and some of the raster-based tools, like dodging and burning, and also using a combination of brushes, we can get pretty close to the look of an actual image, and then also be more flexible in what we do with it. So. I'm not going to have you create this car here. This would be overwhelming. Um, this is something that you would do if you were advanced. But I do want to give you the option to take this as far as you want. So I'm going to show you some basics. I'm going to have you go through the basic parts of creating or tracing the body. We're going to cut out the windows. We're going to do little basics on the wheels. But nothing is complex as this unless you really want to do it. I would hope that you take this as far as you want to go with it. So challenge yourself or just do the basics. So we're going to start out with this image here and before we start creating layers we're going to create a folder. And the reason why we want to do this and down here is the folder button and it's called a group and we can call this group whatever we want, but the reason we want to do this is so that we can trace over the image and also have the image on top of our trace while we're doing it, so it's going to be easier to see. And you'll see how this is going to be an advantage as we start going through here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the blend mode in order for this to work to color. Now the group, everything that's inside the group is going to be, or in the folder, is going to be using this color blend mode. And so now I can start my first, creating my first layer here, and I'm going to show you a couple different ways of using the path tool here. So first of all, the pen tool is right here, and it looks like an old-fashioned fountain pen. And when we click on this tool here, we'll notice that we have some options up here. And the most important options to us are whether we want to create a path or we want to create a shape. And for the most part, it's kind of useless to, to create pixels because once you create them, you can't really edit them. So I never use this pixel option and most of the time just use shape and path, depending on what I want to do. So if I want to create a shape like I was tracing like I showed you the other image, what I want to do is create a shape, and the shape actually looks like this. So when we create a shape, it actually creates a path and also a fill. So this fill is, is pixels, it's colored pixels, and we can change what color we want those pixels to be. So if we double click on the shape here, I can change the colors of the pixels. Now if I just draw a path, I need to put that path on a regular layer. 
So I can't put it on the shape layer here. I would have to create a regular layer and I can then create a path. Um, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another, I'm going to duplicate this so we can see this better. Yeah. Turn off this layer here. And then what happens when we create a path is this. So unlike the shape layer that I just made, when I create this path here, watch when I turn off the visibility, there is nothing there in this path. Okay, it's just points on a graph. And there's a couple things I can do with that. If I wanted to, I can fill it. I can fill it with pixels, just like this did for me. Or I can do what's called stroking. And with the stroke, you actually follow the path with whatever brush tool you want to use. And there's a lot of times when you can use this to, say, erase part of an image that you want to erase. Or to create a path where you want to darken or lighten part of an image and you want it to be a nice sharp edge there or a nice sharp curve. So this is how I use this tool a lot. I use this more so more for that than I actually do to make drawings with or to make art with. But once you learn the tool, you can figure out what applications that you want to use it for. So that's how we create shapes. That's how the or the difference between paths and shapes are. And then we can also take a path and make it into a selection. So you'll see up here, once we have the path, it says make selection. So we can make a selection, we can put a feather on it if we want to, and it makes a selection here. The other option that we have is to make a mask out of it. So when we make a mask, we create this layer here with a mask on it. We can put the mask on whatever raster-based image that we want to use, or whatever raster-based layer we want to use. And then we can also make a shape out of it if we want to. And then that does the same thing that, that we had up here. So there's several different things we can do with it. But let's just get into seeing how it works in kind of a real-world situation here. So I'm going to start back at the beginning here, or start when I made my folders here. Folder, new group. And like I said, you can call it whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. But you want to make sure that you have the color blend mode set. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to trace around this whole thing here. And there's different types of anchors that the tool is going to make. There are straight anchors that the pen tool makes, and there's also curved anchors. To start out with, we just want to make straight anchors. And I just want you to do this because it's the easiest way to kind of learn the tool. Every time that you see an, a curve or an arc, you're going to make a anchor. So I'm going to start by clicking here. Actually, I'm going to do this at the end here. We'll start over here. Then I'm going to click here. This is the middle of an arc here. And then I'm going to click at the end of the arc. And I can see as it starts to curve up here, I'm going to want to put one here. Or if I want it to be a straight line, I just put a straight path to the other end here. I'm going to put one here. And I'm going to put one here and here. This looks pretty straight, so you can probably put one here. And then this is a big curve right here, so I'm going to put this right up here and then right at the end of that curve. And again, how much detail you want to put in this is totally up to you. If you want to start getting more detail in it, then you can always zoom in. And this will help you, like, you want to get the tail light part here back to the pen tool. So click here and I'm just going to click around. So if I want this curve at the end here, I'm going to have to stop my straight line here and then put a curve in the middle here. And then this is going to be another curve right here. So I'm going to start another one here. I'm going to end that here. Put one here. This is curved, so I'm going to put one in the middle. And probably one here would be a good idea, and then end this here. I want to go ahead and trace the tire. So let's go ahead and include the tire in here. Don't worry that this is triangular right now. We're going to fix this, okay? We're going to add curves where we need to add curves. I'm not going to include the shadow here. So I'm going to stop, or I'm going to bring it back up here. And again, you can see this is much easier as I am zoomed in. I'm going to pull in here because this is kind of curved here. 
This is not really a straight line. Put one there. Down at the bottom of this tire here. Up over here. I'm going to follow the spoiler around again. This is curved here, so I'm going to put an uh, anchor there. I'm going to put one here because I want to curve this around here. I'm going to put one in the middle of that. One there. One in the middle here. And then I'm going to reconnect. So I'm connecting the dots here to the last dot here. And you'll notice the cursor turns into the pen tool with a little circle in the bottom right hand corner. So that's closing the path. I'm going to click that and now my path is closed. Now if I turn off my background layer, I can see, oh you know what, I made this into a path. Okay, you don't want to do that. You want to make sure that you start out with shape. But that's okay. I'm going to go ahead and then convert this path into a shape. And if you did it, you can do the same thing. So this is now a shape and I can turn off the background layer. Before I do that, I'm going to zoom back out again. So double click the hand tool. I don't know why that didn't... Oh, I double-clicked the magnifying glass. So let's uh, turn off the visibility of the background layer, and we can see this is what we got here. Okay, so this is the shape we drew, and it's pretty much the basic shape it was of the car, and I did it pretty quickly. It wasn't really, really difficult to just click around there. Now, I want to make this black, so I'm going to change the color by double-clicking in here, and then I get the color picker up. And then I'm just going to go ahead and select black here. The other thing that's cool about this is once you start doing the real detail work, we can select a color from the background here, or from the actual image here. So if I wanted to go and select this color, say I could select that color. But for now, we're just going to do black. So I'm going to be toggling the background on and off in order to get the shape looking correct. Okay? So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to start making the curves.